What's happening, Queen Anne's County? I'll tell you what's happening. Elections are happening. That's right. On Monday, October 5th, the Centerville Town Council election will be held right here at the Vincent Building. Well, actually, upstairs at the Vincent Building. But the polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Now, for you absentee ballot users, those can be requested up and until September 24th, so get your requests in as soon as possible. This year will mark the start of the new Council of Five. Now that's up two spots from the current three. This decision was voted on last October, and there are nine candidates running for four vacancies. What's in the running are two three-year term spots and two two-year term spots. Hannah Combs from the Bay Times Record Observer sat down with each candidate and asked them the same series of questions for you, the viewing audience. Hi, I'm Hannah. I'm here with Robert, uh, Bob Hardy, who is going to be one of our candidates for Centerville Town Council. Bob, welcome. Uh, maybe you can start out by telling us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Bob Hardy. I would like to thank Queen Anne's County TV and the Record Observer for this opportunity to reach the voters of the town of Centerville. I've been a resident of Centerville for 12 years, the county for 30 plus, and I have lived in Maryland over 50 years. I've been active in my community, the county, and the town. I am married to Debbie Hardy. She's a retired elementary and high school teacher who currently works at Queen Anne's County Library. I have four children, six grandchildren, and two of my sons graduated from Queen Anne's County High School. I am a retired major in the United States Army Reserve. I have three college degrees. I have a bachelor's in metallurgical engineering, two master's degrees, one in material science, and I think most important is my engineering administration master's, both from George Washington University. I had a 35-year career in engineering as a civil servant for Navy R&D. We provided day-to-day -day solutions for all Navy ships and submarines. I am proud to have been a federal employee to keep our Navy number one and our country safe. I planned, organized, and conducted numerous multi-million dollar programs and projects interacting with academia and industry. I successfully led and managed the design and construction of a $30 million, 150,000 square foot materials R&D lab. I was involved in many teaming, I was involved in teaming and leading numerous Navy business and strategic planning activities. I recruited over 30 universities and was awarded honorary alumni by University of Maryland at College Park and received the Certificate of Excellence from UMBC. I created and was awarded a trademark, P4I. You'll hear more about that. And Bo, after my retirement, I worked to promote, encourage, and inspire young people in STEM education. I worked with the Board of Ed, in fact, here in Queen Anne's County. Thank you. Bob, why don't you take a minute and tell us why you decided to run for town council? It is the right time for me to serve my community. My vision for the town of Centerville is first and foremost, maintain the family-oriented nature and our excellent lifestyle of our community. I want to support and encourage our business community to flourish and be a driver for moving Centerville into the future. Make Centerville a destination with our historic past restaurants and cultural assets. My involvement in the community has been vast. I've been doing it for 30 plus years. I served on the town of Centerville Parks Advisory Board. I was an executive board member of Character Counts Program. Last couple of years, I was a substitute teacher at the high school and the middle school here in Centerville. I served on my community's Covenants and Lifestyles Committee. I was chairperson for three years at the annual Artisans Festival. So thank you. That's why I'm running. I want to serve my community. Great. Thanks, Bob. Um, what are some of the major issues you see the town of Centerville facing? I don't call them issues. They are my three main interests. Improved communications, economic development, and tourism. When I say improved com communications, I believe it's with our citizens between the town government talking about the operations. We can do this through website, 
social media presence, you know, reaching out, uh, increase outreach to work with businesses, local Queen Anne's County government, and the cultural organizations like the clubs, the historical societies, our schools, our churches, our community groups. Economic development. Again, I want to maintain the family-oriented values and a small town feel. We work together to invigorate the town of Centerville. The pro planning, foresight, and teamwork, we create new business opportunities, increase our tax base, and provide job opportunities. All right, Bob, out of those things, what's, what's one of the main things you hope to accomplish? The main things is with tourism, I think we can kind of make Centerville the county seat, a destination, not just a pass through. Many other county seats on the Eastern Shore, they have that unique nature and assets that we also have. And through that, we will create business opportunities, jobs for our people and our young people. So working together, we can make Centerville a shining star of the Eastern Shore. It is, we are located at the headwaters of the Corsica River. We have a restaurant, a brewery, art galleries, the wharf. And our biggest asset is our historical, architecturally beautiful 18th century homes and buildings. I want to make Centerville a destination. Are there any other things you'd like the voters to know? Yes. Um, I will listen, learn, and serve all the citizens of Centerville. I believe in working together. We will learn from the past, live in the present, and plan for the future. I hope to have open communications and definitely fiscal accountability and responsibility. Uh, again, I would like to thank Queen Anne's County TV and the Record Observer for the, this opportunity to reach all the voters in Queen Anne's. If you haven't realized this, I am a successful, professional, and innovative individual with 35 years of experience in various positions and roles in government. Again, I will three, achieve my goals through positive and forward thinking, through listening, learning, serving all citizens of Centerville. And P4I is professional, personable, proactive, persistent with integrity. So I'm asking for you to vote for Bob Hardy for Centerville Town Council. My email address, if you want to give me your thoughts, comments, ideas, is friendsofbobhardy at gmail. And my Facebook page is Friends of Bob Hardy. Thank you for listening. Looking forward to getting your vote. Hopefully, you will hear more from me in the future. All right, thanks for joining us today. You're most welcome. I'm here with George Smokey Sigler, and thank you for joining us for the Bay Times and Record Observer Centerville Town Council Forum here on QAC TV. Um, we'd like you to start out and tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Thanks, Hannah, for having me in. Um, I'm originally from northwestern Pennsylvania, a little small community, county seat, not a lot unlike what Centerville is. Um, listened in the Marines after graduation, ended up spending 24 years on active duty, retiring from the Marine Corps. Then I went to work for a company out of Cincinnati called Procter & Gamble doing new business development, uh, which is what brought... Deb and I, my wife here, back in 1992, it's kind of ironic, I couldn't wait to get away from small town America and have spent the last 29 years in small town America. Just one of those kind of things. We raised a son and a daughter here, my son Cameron, who's following my footsteps of being a Marine. He will be the seventh generation of Marines in our family, something that we're kind of proud of. My daughter uh, is at Chesapeake, will be graduating this next year. Um, we just like it here. It's, it's home, it's family, it's closeness. Uh, just the way that people treat each other here that, that you don't get that. We moved here from a very large city in North Carolina called Charlotte. And frankly, couldn't wait to get out of the big city and back to the roots of America. Thank you. Um, why don't you tell us why you'd like to be a member of the town council? We know you're no stranger to that. <laughs> no, no. And that's one of the reasons that I want to go back on the council. There were a couple projects that I wanted to see to come to fruition. Both projects had to do with improvements to the infrastructure. And a lot of people just think infrastructure just works. What well, doesn't? You know, there's 27 miles of sewer, water, 
storm water drainage that runs through our 2.7 square mile town. And all of those things need to be taken care of on a regular basis. We're finally getting there. We just finished this big nightmare project and we're done with that. So we're moving that forward. The other thing is I wanted to get upgrades to the sewer plant, which is coming up in the budget, but I also wanted to make sure that we could move forward on our second spray irrigation field. And I'll talk about that a little bit later in my comments because those are things that are going to help continue growth. Okay, and that does tie into our next question, which is what are some of the major issues that you see facing the town? A uh, couple things. When we first moved here in 92, the population of Centerville was about 1,800 folks. Uh, at the 2010 census, that number approached 5,000. And we're getting ready to do consent. And that number is probably going to be northwards of 8,000. Static folks, meaning people who actually reside in the town. When you add in the students who come here Monday through Friday, the business people that come here Monday through Friday, the governmental workers that come here Friday, that number can be somewhere as high as 2,000 people coming into Centerville. We also have a major highway that carries 17,000 cars a day through the middle of our town, north and south, that a lot of people don't realize unless you're stuck in that traffic. We have people that go to play. You know, we want to have that be safe for our citizens. We want to be able to ensure that our planning and zoning is done the right way. And I spent two years on planning and zoning after I left the council. And we just finished rewriting everything to go in accordance with the upcoming new comprehensive plan that's coming, that's going to dictate a lot of the growth. And so we want to make sure that it works that way. And we've got to have somebody on the council who knows how to do that. What's, what's one of the main things that you'd really hope to accomplish with another uh, Something near and dear to my heart and should be near and dear to everybody else's heart. This is my real property tax bill. For those of us who live in Centerville, it came in July. And on one of the lines, it says county rebate, county tax Centerville. That's a tax differential. When I first got on the council, we didn't have a tax differential because we were a May County, not a Shall County. Through diligence, hard work, and a lot of harassment of the county commissioners, we were able to get a county tax differential started. Started off at three cents, went to five, went to eight. Now, it, for some reason, it got locked into 12 by council members who had just left the council. The number should be 17 cents of tax differential coming back. And what that is, is for duplicate services. We do services the same way the county does. And one last thing, that number, 17 cents, is that should be coming back to our residents, and I'm going to work to make that happen. All right, great. Is there anything else you'd like the voters to know? This is not a part-time job. I don't care what anybody says. It isn't. I averaged about 30 hours a week doing this job. I'm retired, so I have the time to do that. You can't be a council member and be an effective council member if you walk in the door, pick up your briefing book, and make decisions that affect our citizen. You just can't do that. So, like I said, I average over 30 hours. And I want to work for the benefits of the citizens. I always have, always will. I'm one of those straightforward kind of guys. I'm available and I'm reachable. My cell phone number is 410-758-0006. Easy number to remember. That was my first number, house number, when I got here. And I kept it because it's such a cool number and easy to remember. Leave me a message. I will get back to you. The one last thing I want to talk about is the five council members. Long before I was on the council, I presented to the old council the five. And, of course, they told us the same council told everybody else, go get the votes, you can get it. Well, we couldn't get the votes because we didn't have social media back in those days. We have it now. And I applaud the diligence and hard work that this group did to make the five council, and I am 100% in support of that. All right, thanks for joining us. Hey, glad to be here. Hi, I'm here with Jeff Keel, who is one of our candidates who's filed to run for Centerville Town Council. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd like you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Jeff Keel. I live in Centerville. I've lived in Centerville for 20 years. I grew up on Ken Island. I 
graduated from Queen Anne's County High School. I um, also, I have, I'm married. I have three stepchildren, six grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. I uh, own my own lawn care, care business. I've done that for 30 years. And I'm a member of Goodwill Fire Company in Centerville. I've been there for 16 years, and I'm currently the assistant chief. All right. Jeff, tell us why you want to run for town council. I want to run for town council because I want the residents of Centerville to have a voice in where their tax money is being spent, and I want to be transparent. I want people to know what's going on in the town because that's what they need to know. Mm -hmm. So, What are some of the major issues that you see facing the council? Major issues I see face, facing the council are small businesses. We don't have enough small business in, in the town of Centerville, and they don't stay. Once they come, they seem to leave. Uh, the other issue I see is the infrastructure. We just had a big infrastructure job that we got done, and it cost a lot of money. So I want to, I want to plan for future infrastructure projects like water and sewer because we have some aging infrastructure in the town. The major one was just replaced, but we have some, some off, off um, outer services that need to be replaced. Mm -hmm. Is that project one of the main things that you want to see accomplished? Are there other well, things? I want to plan for the future. I don't necessarily, I might not get it accomplished. I might only be in there three years. I want, to, I want to try to plan for the future so we don't have to spend a lot of money in the future. Mm -hmm. So we can plan for it ahead of time and start saving the money so when it comes time to redo the project or do the project, we can get it done right. without raising taxes or raising water and sewer fees. Mm -hmm. Are there any other um, issues that you foresee coming up or anything else that you want to share with the voters before the election? No, I just want to, I want to let them know that they can come talk to me anytime. I'm a people person, so I'm available. I'll, I'll put my cell phone out there. I'll send my email. If you have any questions or whatever, anything, just contact me, and I'll try to answer your question. If I don't have the answer, I'll find it. I'll find the answer for you. All right. Well, thanks very much for joining mm -hmm. us today. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with Dan Wirth. Dan is one of our candidates for Centerville Town Council this October. Dan, thanks for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, well, I was um, born at an Army base in Arizona. My dad was in the Army at the time and lived there about a year. And then uh, moved to, um, we moved back to Dundalk. Um, and that's where I grew up. My dad was a steel worker and my mother was a substitute teacher. Um, after that, I, um, Went to college in Philadelphia at Drexel University and graduated with a um, bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. Um, that, it's the first family to graduate from college. After that, I started working for the Department of the Navy at one of their laboratories, um, and I lived in Ellicott City in Columbia. And then um, in 1995, I started working for NASA and got married soon thereafter. And uh, we decided to move to Centerville um, family because we like the small town atmosphere and uh, the friendliness to the people over here. And um, I've been living over here for like 20 years. Uh, about three years ago, I retired from NASA and uh, began working as a, a consultant for, for NASA, one of our contractors. Um, um, Soon thereafter, and um, when things are slow there uh, in consulting, I um, do Instacart, and also recently I've been doing um, uh, work for the uh, U.S. Census. That's great. What were um, some of the things that led you to decide to get involved with the town council? The the um, biggest thing is I want the uh, I want to live in a town that's responsive to its citizens and businesses and uses talented people, that all the talented people that live in town to their fullest potential. One thing I learned while working for NASA is that there are a lot of people that are smarter than me, and those people exist in this town, too. Mm -hmm. What are some of the major issues that you see facing council this year? Well, when I was out uh, collecting signatures for the, um, the Council of Five uh, Charter Amendment, um, I heard a lot from the citizens, and the, the, of course, the biggest thing at the time was the um, uh, 
the overruns on the um, Commerce and Liberty Street project. And um, they were, of course, con concerned about that and, and, and still are. There's just still a lot of questions about what happened. And um, the, the result of all that, of course, is that we now have to pay um, higher water bills and taxes have, have increased as well. So people are especially concerned about that. Um, it also had a got the sense that, that the town didn't really listen to people. And um, I'm not talking about the town day-to-day -to -day staff. I'm talking about the town council itself. And I, I want to be um, one of those, a, a good town council member that actually listens and, and um, understands what people are trying to say. And there was also um, a feeling that there was a selective enforcement or lack thereof of the, of the town codes. Um, and I want to make sure that we apply the town codes equally. And if um, people don't like the town codes, we should change them. Mm -hmm. There's something in particular that you'd like to see accomplished if you were elected? Um, yes, I basically want to um, be um, more responsive um, as a member of the town council and try to keep taxes and water bills under control. But the, th but the bottom line is I need two other council members to help me with that. You know, I can't do this alone. Um, and I hope that people will um, evaluate the other candidates and, and, and elect others that can help out. And I also want to be able to get help from citizens and businesses as well. Um, one thing I've learned being involved with nonprofits is that if um, you don't listen to, to your volunteers, they eventually just go away. You know, if you think the volunteers are just people who will do what you say, that, that doesn't tend to work out. Um, you really need to listen to them and, and, and try to collect their ideas. Okay. Is there anything else that you want to share with our audience today? Um, yeah, I, I'd like to get your vote. Um, I, my name's at the bottom of the ballot, and um, what tends to happen in that case is people uh, vote and they forget, they kind of lose count, and they for, forget about me at the bottom of the ballot. So um, I just want you to remember to save one of your votes for me. You're allowed to vote for four people. And um, if you have any questions in the meantime, you can text me or give me a call. My phone number is 410-490-3510. And um, if you do call, leave a message because I, that's how I screen calls from telemarketers. Um, that's all. Reasonable practice. Well, thanks for joining us. We oh, really welcome. appreciate it. Okay. Hi, I'm here with Dale Beecraft, and he is going to be one of our candidates for Centerville Town Council. Welcome. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. Thanks for having me, Tana. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I was uh, born and raised in the northern neck area of Virginia, a small resort town called Colonial Beach. I graduated from Colonial Beach High School with an academic diploma, went to Randolph-Macon College, and graduated with a BA in psychology. Did my graduate work at Virginia Commonwealth University uh, in a double major in educational administration and physical education. And uh, also attended Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, where I studied pastoral ministry. Uh, I retired last year. Up until that point, I worked 45 years in service-oriented professions, education, and ministry. Uh, I came to Queen Anne County in 2004 and moved to Centerville permanently in 2007. So I've been here 14 years, roughly. I married my wife, Lori, for 32 years. I have five adult children, all of which are Queen Anne County High School graduates. Go Lions! <laughs> and. Uh, my personal belief is, uh, as far as my philosophy is concerned, it's faith, family, and public service in that order. All right. So why would you want to be a town council member for Centerville? Uh, I like to, to use my passion for public service and the experience and, and uh, knowledge I've gained over the years. As I said a minute ago, I've spent 45 years gaining experience and a wealth of knowledge I'd like to use to benefit the people of Centerville. Um, I believe that one of the, the big things coming in is that 
you got to be a, a councilman who's a team player with the expanded camp of now. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand the concept of collaboration and working together and coming up with the best solutions for the town. I think I'm open-minded, uh, which I would bring that to the town, and I'm certainly very transparent and approachable. Mm -hmm. So uh, I believe the qualities would be a good fit. Well, that leads into our next question. What are some of the major issues that you see facing this new council? I personally feel like coming in in the COVID-19 era, it's important not, not to come in with a long list of pet projects, but to be able to come in to assess things as, as they are right now. Uh, one of the big issues, I think, is the issue, are we going to grow? And along with that, if the answer is yes, becomes the infrastructure cost it takes to grow. Energy infrastructure, that's one of the big issues right now, as you're well aware. The, the infra infrastructure costs and the town debt ratio, we're, we're below the cap on that now, but it would be, be to our benefit to be able to lower that even further. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, I feel like uh, we need to take a hard look at water and sewer rates. I think that's an issue. Um, we need to look at maintaining safety in the community. Uh, we have a very good reputation in, in that area, and we need to maintain that. And uh, just making sure that the, we continue to attract businesses and, and continue with the revitalization, utilizing our historical um, assets properly, mm -hmm. some of the big issues. Out of those, or, or is there anything in particular that you see as um, something you'd really like to accomplish if you were elected? Well, I'm, I'm very interested in attracting business and, and smart growth principles. Well, something I didn't mention a minute ago was, was the YMCA. I'm a big champion of getting the YMCA built and getting, getting it in Centerville as, a, as an asset. Mm -hmm. So I would be a, a major champion behind that, that effort. Fantastic. Anything else that you want to share with the voters before we go? Well, personally, my, my campaign motto is wisdom, honesty, and integrity. And for me, wisdom... It's something I would bring to the, to the job. It is, it is a combination of knowledge, experience, and common sense. The uh, honesty part, for me, truth is, is not just a, an option, it's the only option. You know, I'm not going to say one thing to one group and one thing to another. What I believe I'm going to say, and uh, so it'll always be the truth as I, as I see it. And integrity is being the same person no matter who you're with. You know, not changing to suit the crowd you're with, but being the same person uh, at all times. The big thing is my personal slogan in life is nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. And I care very deeply for the town of Centerville, and I care very deeply for the people of Centerville, and that's why I would ask for the vote. All right. Dale, thanks so much for joining us. We Thank you for having it. me. We're welcoming Ann Lane with us now. Ann will be running for Centerville Town Council this October. Thanks for joining us, Ann. Thank you for having me, Hannah. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. I am Ann Lane. I've lived in Centerville since 1980. I'm a lifelong resident of Queen Anne's County. Have been a homeowner in Centerville since 1991. Uh, my son and my parents all live in Centerville. And I've been a school bus driver since 2008. I've also worked with um, in developmental disabilities, both uh, with supported employment and in residential settings. So I've got an associate's degree from Chesapeake College and I'm five classes shy of a bachelor's de degree in organiz organizational dynamics from Wilmington University. I have served on the board of Daycare Incorporated a long time ago, I think 1996, and I was a member of Goodwill here briefly. I want to take this opportunity to commend the hard work that those members do. I um, was also very active in the Maryland State Education Association while I was an employee of the school system. Great, thanks. 
for me to run for town council? It's something I've wanted to do for, for a while, and I have the time now. Oftentimes, when we're raising our families um, and there's you know, work duties and responsibilities, we don't have, have the time. And I'm now in a position in my life that I have the time to devote to this. Mm -hmm. What are some of the major issues you see facing the council this year? Um, I think that reducing the debt is something that we need to focus on and certainly not accruing additional debt. I would like to see the uh, capital, um, the, the two, two projects that I would like to see is the completion of the water pipes and sewer pipes and um, getting the, the new truck and plow uh, for the town. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of some housekeeping, cleaning up of loose ends. So that is our next question. What are the main things that you hope to accomplish? And I guess that truck and plow would be one of the things. Yeah, those are on my mind. I want to say that I like Centerville being a small town and how fortunate we are to raise our families and enjoy our retirement. Small community and a safe community. So any decisions as far as growth, growth and development uh, will be made, I'll be very deliberate and very conscious of, of decisions regarding growth and development and um, look forward to proceeding with the assisted living site and the YMCA and affordable housing for folks of, of moderate means and fixed incomes. Mm -hmm. So those are some, some things on my mind, um, making sure that we continue to be in compliance ADA compliance and accessibility to all residents of the town in regard to the parks, parking, mm -hmm. the businesses in the town. Um, Is there anything else that you might want to share with the voters? So community-based entertainment, recreation, I hope that when we're looking at those types of things, we're, we're looking at them with um, inclusiveness and a diverse uh, entertainment and recreation or not a one-size-fits-all community, so we all have different interests and um, want to adhere to the mission statement in the community plan, as I was doing some background on that. All right. Well, Ann, thanks very much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Welcome to Stephen Klein. Uh, Steve is going to be running for Centerville Town Council in the October election. And Steve, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So me and my wife, Kim, have lived in Centerville for more than a decade now. And uh, we're raising our twins, Alex and Emily. They're seven years old here in town. And uh, I just want to start by saying, you know, certainly thanks to my wife uh, for letting me uh, do this, run for town council. I wouldn't be sitting here without her, so thanks to her. But uh, I'm an Eagle Scout. And... Uh, have been a Marylander my entire life. In fact, I'm a seventh generation uh, Marylander uh, from Baltimore originally, but I moved over here about 10 years ago. Great. Well, why were you considering running for town council? So I'm the son of a, of a steel worker, a Baltimore steel worker, uh, who worked in those steel mills for 33 years. And we were taught from a young age to, to move towards a job that needed to be done. And when you get done on an important cause to, to get right to it. And as a kid, as a Boy Scout growing up, uh, I did a lot of public service projects uh, in town where, where I was living then and carried that with me really through my whole life. And I think it's time to step up and you know, you, there's clearly things that need to happen in town and uh, I think I can be a part of that. I don't come to this race with, uh, with an agenda. You know, there's not a single thing that I'm uh, obsessing over having to get done, mm -hmm. but I do think we need serious-minded and professional people to, to run for these jobs. So I'm excited to see uh, nine people running for these seats. It's really uh, refreshing. Yeah. What are some of the major issues, though, that you see facing the council this coming year? Sure. So I think that uh, the town needs to do a better job of communicating with its residents. Uh, as you saw, I think, and it's, it's good to see some of this, uh, but there's clearly appetite for change in town. You saw a lot of excitement around the last election. 
uh, a lot of excitement around the road construction project. And I think people have lost confidence in town government. And it's difficult to have confidence in something uh, that you never hear from. Uh, it's tough to imagine, uh, you know, again, having confidence in a town government that you don't hear from. Mm -hmm. And so the, the next batch of town council members have got to do a better job of communicating with uh, the residents. You know, we, we have a uh, $17 million debt uh, on the books right now. That is more than three times the general budget of the town, uh, which I think is pretty alarming. So the second issue is we've got to start to address that debt issue. And you can marry those two things. Uh, every quarter, uh, everybody in town gets, gets a letter, a bill, utility bill from the town. Uh, and I would argue every one of those utility bills should include a financial statement of uh, how the town is doing, what revenues look like, what expenditures look like, where we are in the budget year. Uh, and instead of having a three-page budget document that is uh, really difficult to read, it has no context from previous budget years, we have got to change the way we do that. The third thing I would mention is uh, broadband internet. You know, everybody, seemingly everyone, is learning from home now, uh, working from home, and if we're going to place Centerville in a relevant position uh, for the next two or three hundred years, we have got to be better on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, and get a more reliable internet connection and more competition because that, that increases customer service. And uh, the final thing I'll mention is growth. You know, we have the potential to add hundreds of new homes to Centerville, looking at a couple of farms across town, and that has to be managed. That has to be, you have, the town council members have got to be asking the right questions of developers and demanding the right answers. Mm -hmm. is, is there one main thing that you would hope to accomplish out of those? Sure, I want to restore people's confidence in the town government. Uh, I want people to know that the town government is competent. Uh, it is looking out for the residents' best interests. And I've got a reputation uh, professionally and personally as being kind of a no-nonsense guy, uh, but I'm also a positive guy. And I think if you look at what's happening on social media and in the country broadly, I think it's a very negative. And what I want to do is, is push back against that at whatever scale can. We don't talk to our neighbors the way we talk to people on social media. We don't talk to people at the grocery store that way. And I think Centerville is a good laboratory for, you know, how do we treat people better? How do we approach problems with a solutions-oriented uh, attitude, but also a positive attitude as well? And lastly, is there anything else that you want to share with the voters? Yeah, I think that, that message of positivity uh, that we can, uh, you know, this is not, Centerville doesn't have to be the place where we talk about big national debates. The town government has some very specific and tangible things that they have to uh, get done for the residents of, this, of the town. And I think the town needs to demand more from its government. The residents need to demand more from its government. Get involved. Uh, please vote. Certainly, uh, I would say look into all of the candidates. I think there are candidates that are uh, well positioned to, uh, by temperament, by experience. I've got 20 years of experience in public policy. Um, and I think I come to this uniquely qualified for the job. All right. Well, thanks so much for being here with Thank us. Thank you today. for the opportunity. Welcome to Fred McNeil. Fred is here with us today. He's going to be one of the candidates for town council on the October ballot. Welcome. Hannah, thank you for having me. And I want to thank Channel 7 and uh, the Record Observer and the Bay Times. This is a great community thing you guys are doing, and we really appreciate it, because campaigning has changed. We can't knock on doors and say, here's Fred. You have to put a door hanger and run like heck. So we well, really appreciate that. give us an introduction. Tell us about yourself. Uh, yes, and again, thank, and for all the viewers, thank you for watching. Uh, McNeil's, I've lived here for 41 years. Uh, Ted had the best sense, my oldest son. He's in TV, okay? Rest of us are ed educators. I had a wonderful 30 plus years, I'm still doing it, uh, being a teacher, vice principal, ran the alternative school, an educator. Uh, I'm now semi-retired. Hannah, you never get to retire when you're a teacher, okay? I still work part-time for the Board of Ed, teaching those kids who are thrown out of the alternative school, a kind of a one-on-one -on -one thing. Uh, very active in the community. Uh, three children, three grown children, uh, four grandchildren. Uh, and like I said, we've lived here 41 years, and we've been spoiled. The quality of life here is just outstanding, and that's one of the reasons I'm running. Uh, we want to protect 
and plan for Centerville as it grows. And it's been great to us for 41 years, and maybe we can help out a little mm -hmm. bit. And, I, and that does lead into our next question, um, the reasons that you do want to run for town council. Yeah. Hey, I'm a firm believer, and I, I was talking with the guys, uh, I guess you might, and I might have talked about it. Politics in America now is not because, it's, it's ugly. It's quite frankly ugly. Uh, I don't think people are listening. I don't think people are compromising. Uh, when you get to be 73, you have a tendency to listen a little more, compromise a little more. Maybe that's how I stayed married 45 years, okay? <laughs> and I'd like to, uh, the reason I'm running, I think we have to, we're a small community. We're 5,000 people. And uh, I, it's great about Center of you can wave to people, talk to people, you go to church with people, you shop with people. And uh, one of the reasons I'm running, I want to make sure we keep our quality of life, but at the same time, uh, I have an old boss, Bernie Sadowski, of superintendent of schools mm -hmm. here, and he said, Fred, always have a one, five, and ten-year plan for your personal life and your career. And I think that's real important to town to do that. Yeah. What are some of the major issues you see facing council this year? I think the biggest issue for me as a resident of 41 county uh, years uh, is communications. You know, I don't care whether it's a marriage or a job or a teacher, it's real important that you communicate. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to do a real good job. You know, whoever made us Hannah gave us two ears and one mouth. So listening must have been the priority. And I think what we have to do is listen to our community, okay? Listen to what we want to do in the future with that one in five, ten year type of plan. And I think that's the most important, because we're going to change. We're a county mm -hmm. seat. Uh, we're going to change, and we have to be prepared for that change. Do you have anything in particular you'd hope to accomplish if you're elected? Well, I think the first thing I want to do, this will be the first time we have five town commissioners, so we mm -hmm. want to set some of the precedents. Uh, I think, you know, if we can set the precedent of listening, cooperation, in terms of uh, building bike paths and encouraging our existing businesses, we all agree with that. But I think one of the most important things this new group of com town commissioners can do is that's create civility, okay, and cooperation in an atmosphere that we can govern a, a nice small community, keep its quality of life, but also prepare for the future. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you want to share with the voters before you go? Uh, I just uh, like to thank everybody. I've uh, Hannah, I've put out seventeen, about fourteen hundred flyers now. I've knocked on just about fourteen out of the seventeen hundred doors in Centerville, not to speak with people because of the coronavirus, but hanging the hangers out. Mm -hmm. I just want people to know the type of enthusiasm uh, to going out campaigning that way. I certainly bring to the office. All right. Well, thanks for joining well, us today. Thank you very much. Okay. Now keep George out of trouble, Hannah. Would you <laughs>
One of the main things that I would hope to accomplish as a town council member would be to be able to use my passion and my background in event planning to plan town events and town functions that help support our local businesses, bring people to see our beautiful historic district, and create an even better sense of community for our town and our families. So Shelby, what else would you like the voters to know? I'd like the voters to know that I love this town and I would be honored to dedicate myself to enriching our community and our town for our families. And I urge everyone to go out and vote on October 5th or submit your absentee ballots because everyone's vote counts and your voice needs to be heard. And I would be honored if you vote Shelby Brown for town council. Great, thank you so much. Thank you.